Hello and welcome back to the Forms for SharePoint video guide. In our previous videos, we have looked at how to design the forms, how to connect SharePoint sites, lists and libraries using lookup and list library controls. We have also created separate form sets for Microsoft 365 groups and SharePoint security groups. If you haven't seen these videos yet, I have linked the full playlist in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to not miss any of the future videos on automation. We have already seen how easy it is to customize SharePoint forms using Plum Sale Forms Designer. There are many practical out-of-the-box features that don't require any coding knowledge, such as adding images, data tables, background colors, and more. However, sometimes you need a little bit more advanced customization, and Plum Sale Forms Designer helps you customize your forms further using JavaScript framework, allowing you to surpass any limitations you might face. The forms are built with Vue.js and include jQuery, Kanda UI controls, and the PNP.js library. Today, we will cover several useful JavaScript customizations that you can use in your forms today. So let's get started. Let's start in SharePoint. Here I have a purchase order list that contains columns for purchase order number, order date, client, product, quantity, and total. The product column is a lookup column linked to another list that contains product themes and prices. Let's look at the first order item. It would be great if when a user selects a product, they could see not only the product name, but also a price per unit. Additionally, the total column, which is a currency type, should calculate the total based on the product's price and quantity. All of this is achievable with JavaScript code and Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint. We can display additional columns in a single SharePoint lookup column and add a sum formula in the total column. So let's open Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint. I have connected to our site and list, as well as pre designed the form and added all the fields from the SharePoint list. We don't need to do anything else in the design mode, so let's click on the JavaScript editor tab. We already used JavaScript customization in the previous video when we created custom form sets and experimented with custom routing. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will link it in the description. And back to our form. We can see instructions how to use the JavaScript editor, and generally the JavaScript code in this section will be executed when the current form is loading. However, you also have the option to use code that will be executed once the form is rendered, before the form is saved, or after it is saved. The following predefined variables can be utilized in the code. FD is a form manager that provides access to all events, containers, controls, fields, validators, and data of the form. Whenever you want to manipulate the form, you need to call the manager first. $sign is a jQuery object, and it allows you to access jQuery library. Dialog allows you to open any other form in Dialog, pass parameters to it, detect if it was saved or not, and pass parameters back. SPFX context defines current SharePoint context. PNPJS library is a JavaScript library that provides um, a fluent API for interacting with SharePoint and Microsoft 365. It simplifies the development of client-side code by abstracting away the complexities of the underlying REST APIs. With PNP.js, developers can perform common operations such as querying lists, creating sites, managing user profiles, etc., using simple and familiar JavaScript syntax. You can find more information following this link. The documentation section on our website covers all objects and functions in great detail with various examples, so you can always reference it if you need more information. And now let's paste the code. The first part will make both the product name and price visible in the lookup column. As you can see, the code includes a line that retrieves the price along with the selected product. An important note, in the product column, we need to specify the extra field. In our case, it's price. Next is the code for the total column. This code will calculate the sum of the products based on price and quantity. Just make sure to use the SharePoint field names in the code. So let's save the form and check if everything works correctly in the SharePoint list. First, I will refresh the page. And now let's update the current item. As you can see, we now get the product name along with its price. Let's select product two. In the quantity field, we can enter one, 
and the total is calculated automatically. Great. Let's change the quantity to 5, for example, and the total is changed as well. All the code samples used in this video will be linked in the description. The next JavaScript customization will require certain profile properties of a user selected in the People Picker field. Let's look at our SharePoint list. This one is for tracking projects. We have the following columns, project name, project description, assigned to, and department. Let's see how the form behaves prior to adding the code. We can fill it out. And as you can see, Jessica Adams is a sales rep. So what we aim to achieve is when a user types their own name or their coworker's name, the code will request the profile properties and autofill the department column. Now let's open Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint. I have already designed the form and let's click on JavaScript Editor tab. Now we can paste the code. And as you can see, the code will get the profile properties of the employee and fill out the department they are linked to. Again, we need to make sure to use the SharePoint field names in the code. Let's save the form and go back to SharePoint. We can update the item we created earlier. In the Assign To field, we can select a different user, for example, Karen Schuller, and the department field is updated automatically. We can change it back to Jessica, and again, we get the department name here. This code can be adjusted to get any other user profile properties you might need. Another great case for using JavaScript is asynchronous validation before creating a new item. It's not ideal if someone double books a meeting room or schedules multiple events for the same date and location. We can use code to check if one of the line items already has the same booking for this date and room. Here we have our list with the following columns, meeting, event date, and event room. So let's create a new item. And as you can see, now there are two meetings scheduled for room number two on June 25th. While it's manageable to notice the double booking and make changes with just a few items on the list, imagine if we had hundreds of bookings, that would be almost impossible. So this is where asynchronous validation can improve user experience by adding notifications that another event is scheduled for this particular date and location. So let's open Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint. We will be using event date and event room fields in our code example, and you can try it out with your own SharePoint fields. I'll switch to the JavaScript tab and paste the code, which not only checks if the same combination of event room and event date has already been booked, but also displays an error message if a user hasn't selected an event date or event room. If these fields are complete and there is no conflict with existing events, a new item will be added. So let's save the form and go back to SharePoint to schedule a new event. This one will be for team brainstorming meeting. Let's try saving it without a date and we get an error message. Now let's try to save a meeting without adding a room. Again, we get an error message. And finally, we can try to double book room number one and we get a different error message saying that another meeting is already booked for the selected date and room. So we need to pick a different one. Great, now our new event is saved to the list. And let's explore another use case of JavaScript with Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint, calculating totals for the data table control. We delved into the capabilities of the data table control in one of the previous videos. This control allows you to add a dynamic table to the forms, and you can add as many columns of different types as you need, such as text, number, currency, boolean, etc. However, the control's default configuration does not include an option to calculate totals for either rows or columns. This is where a simple JavaScript code can make a difference. Let's look at our example. Here I have a data table with columns for product, price, quantity, and amount. For now, the amount column is at zero, and we would have to manually enter a value there. But after we add JavaScript code, this column will be populated automatically based on the quantity and price. Additionally, I created a separate SharePoint currency type column called total, which will automatically calculate and display the total for all products in the table with the help of JavaScript code as well. To implement this, let's open Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint. 
In our code, we will need to use the data table name, which is data table one, as well as the price, quantity, and amount column names, and the SharePoint total column. Now let's open JavaScript editor and I'll paste the prepared code sample. Here we have defined that the product of the quantity and price columns needs to be reflected in the amount column. As mentioned earlier, we will add calculation for the total amount of all items in the table. Now we can save the form and test how everything works in SharePoint. I have refreshed the page and let's add one more line item to our table. And as you can see, the amount column now automatically reflects the product of the price and quantity columns, and the total field shows the overall sum. Great, the code works, and you can try using it in your own form. All you need to do is replace the column names with the ones in your table. The next use case that we're going to look at is how to add a button to the toolbar with the help of JavaScript. For example, a button that can auto assign a ticket to a specific user. Here we have a ticket form and it would streamline the process greatly if I could assign this ticket to myself instead of typing out a name. So let's open Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint and we go to the JavaScript editor. Now paste the code. Here I have specified the icon that will be visible on the button. In our case, it's user followed, but you can use any icon available from the Microsoft Fluent UI. The class is set to outline primary. For the text, you can specify what you need the button to convey. In our case, it's assigned to me. Location specifies where you want the button to be located on the toolbar. I have set it to zero, which will position the button right next to save and close buttons. In the click function, I specify that the current user's login name should be entered into the assigned to field. Let's save the form and check if the button works in SharePoint. I'll edit the existing item. Great, the button is right here. Now let's check if it works. Fantastic, now I can assign this ticket to me with one click. This is just one of the buttons that can be added to the toolbar. For example, you can also add an approve button that can change the status from waiting for approval to approved. And you can find more information about the JavaScript and adding buttons in the article linked in the description. And now onto our last example of enhancing SharePoint forms with JavaScript. This one involves list to library control and is probably a little bit more complex than the previous ones. The list to library control allows you to view, edit, add or delete items and documents from the related SharePoint lists and document libraries directly in the form. We have two dedicated videos that go in depth on all the features that this control has to offer. And today let's see how we can add even more functionality to this control. Here we have a list of projects that, and their due dates and the task list that contains tasks for each project. Let's look closer at one of the projects. As you can see, the form already has the list of library control added and it's linked to the task list. So it shows the tasks and who is assigned to them. We will be using JavaScript to add a button that can copy a selected list item or multiple items. Let's open Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint switch to the JavaScript tab, and I'll paste the code. By the way, all the code examples will be linked in the description to this video. We have specified that the selected title, status, assigned to, and project fields need to be copied. Let's save the form and go back to SharePoint. Let's open the admin organization project, and I'll select a task, and the copy button appears, great. And as you can see, the item is copied now. We can try to add another task to this list. And we can copy this one too. And as you can see, these items were also added to the task list. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, hit the subscribe button to not miss any of the future videos. And you can try Plum Sale Forms for SharePoint with a free 30-day trial. If you have questions about the JavaScript code that we've used in today's video, or you have your own use case, please share in the comments below. Again, thank you for watching and see you soon.